Good day, guys and girls. Have you ever asked the question, do I have enough attic insulation? Am I wasting money and just sending energy and expenses literally out the roof? Well, stick around. We're going to go through some information that may help you out. So stick around. So I just want to take a couple minutes today to go over my experience with attic insulation and adding additional attic insulation to my attic space and the results that I've been seeing. Now, full disclaimer, you're not necessarily going to see these results yourself. These are very specific conditions that I was dealing with. And if you're dealing with something similar, I would expect similar results. But again, this is not a guarantee. So as you can see here, my neighbor and I, quite a difference in the icicle forming. Now, I'm just gonna try to back up a little bit more. My neighbor's house and mine are identical. Built in 1979 by the same contractors, same everything. Same thing with my neighbor here and the one over there. The only difference between my house here and this one is this one doesn't have a garage. So it's a pretty like for like for like for like comparison. So I think that this is pretty fair. Now again, house was built in 1979. Building code was a lot different than what it is right now. So last year, 2024, I decided to up that insulation value. And I think it's pretty clear that it's being paid back right now. And just for comparison, we'll try to see the other side of my house. And you can see that there's minimal, minimal amount of icicles that have formed on that side of the house. So there's a couple of reasons why this can happen. We're gonna go over a few of them anyways right now, but I want you to take a look at the rest of the neighborhood. Look at these ones back here. So this one right here, yeah, it's got some, but look at the one in the middle. Wow. And then the one beside it, it's kind of an in-between. It's not as much as the first, but not nearly as much, <laughs> right? Like it, the, the evidence is pretty, pretty damning on it. So we're gonna go over a few reasons why this can actually occur. So the number one reason is you don't have enough attic insulation. So what will happen in this case is the heat will escape up through the attic space and it'll hit the backside of that roof. And when it hits the backside of the roof, it melts the snow that's on there. And then as that snow melts and comes towards the edge of this roof line here, meaning this section between the wall and here, this is all uninsulated and it's vented as you can see. So it's as cold as the air out here. Now we've been dealing with up to about minus 14 or down to about minus 14 Celsius at night, which is I think about minus four Fahrenheit for our friends down south. So it's getting pretty cold. That's my suspicion of what's happening here is that there's not enough insulation, that heat's getting up into that attic space. Maybe we can demonstrate a little bit better back here. I'm trying to make it as easy to understand. So that heat goes up, hits the roof, melts that snow, melt water comes down. As soon as it gets past this edge right here, it starts freezing, right? And as you can see on mine, it's not really happening. There's a few odd spots, but it's not really happening. So that's, that's the primary reason, or at least that's my opinion on what's the primary reason. Another reason could be that this side here gets more sun than what this side does here. And that is true. So right now I'm facing north. So the sun comes up over here and it's casting light more onto this roof right here as opposed to this roof here. But if that were true of my house, then we'd expect to see a lot of icicles down this side of the house, just like we're seeing right here, and we're not. 
So I don't think sun is really the whole issue here. It's obviously adding to it, but it's not the whole issue. The other reason that we could be getting additional icicles anyways, maybe not the whole issue, but adding to it is the fact that I know that my neighbor has gutter guard. I do too. And I have videos on it being installed, how to install it. Check it out if you're having some issues installing gutter guard or leaf guard or leaf filter. So what can happen is there's not a whole lot of area for that water to get into now when you have these gutter guards on and can actually cause the water to kind of freeze on top and actually start coming over the side. So that's an issue too. And then the last contributing issue that it could be is literally that you have your house too hot. We keep our house at about 22 degrees Celsius, which is about 72 Fahrenheit, if I'm not mistaken. You can check my math on that. So if you keep your house too hot, then obviously you're increasing the amount of hot air that's coming up, hitting the ceiling space, possibly making it into the attic, and then doing this again. So there's really the four issues that I see that could be happening, but yet they're not happening on my house. And I attribute that specifically to the increased amount of insulation. So I think the evidence is pretty clear. Again, I don't have any real scientific data with instruments and all kinds of stuff like that. But I think it's pretty safe to say that our attic space is more insulated and doing better than all the houses that are in my neighborhood. So we're gonna hop up into the attic and I'm gonna show you exactly what we did to increase that value. All right, guys and girls, so we're up in the attic now. And as you can see, everything has been topped up here with cellulose insulation. So cellulose is just this kind of material here, a lot of shredded newspaper and other materials like that. It is not fiberglass insulation like this. So I'd like to point out just how consistent and even everything is in there. Really, really good job by these installers. Very, very impressed. Not sponsored by them at all. So I don't really want to get into too much of a debate about this. So I just used the internet and the responses that I got from the internet to determine what the R value is of blow-in cellulose versus blow-in fiberglass. Now, they say that fiberglass has an average of 2.2 to 2.7 R per inch, whereas cellulose has a value of 3.2 to 3.8. So what we're going to do is we're going to average those out. We're going to say that the pink insulation has an insulation value or R value of 2.5 and the cellulose has a value of 3.5. And one thing I'd like to note too is that it's perfectly safe and perfectly acceptable to install cellulose over fiberglass insulation. And one of the other advantages of cellulose is, is it's a little bit denser so it actually gives you some better sound reducing, sound transmission reducing properties. Unlike fiberglass, which is quite light. That's the best way I can describe it without getting too scientific. But I think the advantage here is with cellulose. That's just my personal opinion and the opinion of the installers for that fact. So as you can see, we've got a nice little hole excavated in here. What I've tried to do is I've tried to pull out the pink insulation and the cellulose insulation down to the bottom which is actually the drywall ceiling just to try to demonstrate what we had in here originally for insulation so maybe put a light on this make this a little bit better but we're down on the bottom and i'd say we have about seven inches we can maybe be a little bit generous and say eight inches worth of pink down there. And we got approximately 18 inches 
total. So if we use the averages that we had just discussed, eight inches of pink fiberglass insulation at two and a half per inch, give you an R value of R20. Then if we take into account the 10 inches of cellulose that they've blown in at R3.5, that gives us another 35 in R value, and you add the two together, and you're coming up with R55, where the original house that was built in 1979 had an R value approximately of R20. So I'm not sure what the code was back in 1979 in Ontario, Canada, but the current code, depending on what compliance package you use, the R value is a minimum of R50. And again, depending on the package can be as high as R60. So I realize this video is about insulation, but another important factor is venting. And you can't see it, but along the whole ridge here, we have what they call ridge vent. So that ridge is continuously vented. You don't have those individual vents that might be placed down the side of the house. My original venting on this house had four vents along this side of the roof. Now I have continuous venting along that entire ridge and I've doubled up on the venting down in the soffit. Again, you can't see that. We doubled up on that and that makes a difference as well. Up here, it is not quite as cold as outside, but very, very close. And that's what you want. You don't want heat escaping up into the attic. It's going to happen. doesn't matter. You can put four feet of insulation. You're still going to have heat escape. It's just you're trying to slow down that process. So venting is a good idea. Just like these gable vents that I installed some years ago. Just to get some venting because this entire front roof had no ventilation at all. So ventilation does go a long way. Well, it's been another week or two. And it's about minus eight Celsius right now. And as you can see, not a whole lot has changed. In fact, some of the icicles have gotten a lot worse than they had been in the past. Now, if we go like a goat to try to get through here, we can actually see just how thick that is. That's almost 10 inches now. And that's not including the section that's frozen in the east trough. So you're looking at definitely a foot, 14 inches worth of ice along this entire edge. And we don't seem to be doing as bad. We got a slight bit of ice there, but look at the snow. That's two feet of snow sitting there. So the insulation is doing something. Well, guys and girls, I really hope you enjoyed the video, that you learned something from it. And I think it's pretty clear that, at least in my case, that the addition of insulation in my attic really, really made a difference. Now, if you liked the video, found it informative, please give it a thumbs up. And please like and subscribe to the video and subscribe to my channel. Really, really helps me as a content creator, allows me to buy better equipment, and make better content. Now, I firmly believe that the information is much more important than the flashiness of the content, but hitting that subscribe button really doesn't cost you anything at all, and it can make a big, big difference for a content creator like me, so that would be much, much appreciated. Thank you in advance. Now, if you're looking for content on house maintenance, property maintenance, vehicle maintenance, basically anything that's inside your property line, this is the place. I don't duplicate content that's out on YouTube. I provide content from a perspective that has not been done yet on YouTube. I can promise you that. You will not be sorry if you subscribe to this channel. We're adding new content every couple of weeks. We're trying to make it a goal to do no less than monthly. So if you're looking for content like that, again, this is the place. I firmly believe that everyone is capable of more than they think. It might take a special tool here and there, but with the information you're going to receive on this channel, you're going to be more capable than what you could ever imagine.
boy, girl, man, woman, old, young, doesn't matter. Just with a little bit of information, you're going to be capable of more than what you think. Because you never know, unless you bear. We'll see you on the next video.